Pico Space Industries proudly presents version two of its utility pack. And when I say pack, I mean really pack. There's a lot of items to go through in this video. So sit back, because I'm gonna explain how everything in this pack works from stuff that already existed from version one that might have slight updates to version two items, which are absolutely freaking amazing. So let's jump into it. So the first item we're gonna cover is the 45 degree trusses and angle maker. So these guys little here are absolutely amazing and they allow you to connect these 45 degree trusses to the more traditional 90 degree trusses that go up and down. So you can make really cool stations, add some additional design flair, or make really cool space art that then collapses into the planet. Yeah, lots of things that you can do with it, but it's pretty simple basic. Let's move on. Next item is the engine breakaway system. Basically, once you hit 500 meters per second, you don't really need that heavy lift engine anymore, so you can just basically drop it off. There it goes. And you can continue on the more efficient engines into space. Which brings us to our next item, which is the invisible separation unit. Now, this was originally the truss unit, but the truss unit has got an upgrade, which we'll cover later. So I split it into two parts, where we get a sneak peek at one of the new parts in the utility pack, the pedal fairing collection. In this case, it's the cone, which opens up like so, and it launches whatever happens to be on the surface. Now, if you have a docking port, you can actually go back and redock with the cone, and it has it where you can open and close the pedal fairings as many times as you want, which makes it actually quite useful for orbiting craft or other missions where you might want to take off and land from multiple locations with an atmosphere. We'll zoom back out to our little satellite over here and zoom back in. This is the PicoSat. It was originally in version one. It still exists. Nothing has changed about it. It's a small controller for your satellite but it only has a little bit of torque. So even with basically nothing on it, it rotates very slowly. This is obviously not ideal for larger spacecraft, but for small little things like this, it works. Which brings us to these little guys here. These are solar radiators. So this is something new I've been working on, and basically these will radiate heat, and I'm putting that in quotations, that some of my engines will be producing as they run. Now, heat isn't temperature, but when heat gets to maximum, it'll actually start to create temperature. So I'm still working on it, but this will basically reduce heat. It also ties into N204's electricity pack because it does actually produce a very small amount of electricity as well, which is also very neat. And obviously I did not put it into orbit, so away it goes. Let's go back to the build screen and we'll show you the rest of the pedal fairing. So the fairings can be found in the fairing section. There are four variants. The first one being the cone, which we saw already. We also have the capsule, which is a larger capsule. The tube, which is Apollo style. And the really big tube, because, you know, they're big. Now, the latter two have a neat feature, which is actually their tops will change to whatever you put on top of them within a certain degree of freedom because obviously you don't want to put something super thin on top of these. You won't have any room to make a rocket. So this is a really cool aspect to them. And here's all four pedal tubes in action. And you can see they all open up to about the same degree. The cone opens up a little bit wider. Um, I just found that was more useful. And then again, they do all close up. And you can do this as many times as you want. Just realizing that when it opens, it will release anything on the floor. So just be aware of that. Here's the pedal tube fairing in action. See here, it's released both spacecraft. And if I want to, because demonstration, you'll note that the landing craft is actually slowly going back and will actually dock with the pedal fairing, which can then be closed to allow for re-entry into a sol um, an atmosphere or other thing like that or transport and then released again for additional deployment. This is particularly useful if you're going to several moons um, and you want to use the larger spacecraft here for transfer orbits etc. And then obviously here you can just you know 
rotate with your primary command module and pick up your spacecraft. One thing to note is while the bottom of the pedal fairings all will have a docking capability, whatever's on the top will not reattach to the top. So something to keep in mind if you are using the tubes that anything at the top can't really connect unless it's connected to something that's connected to the bottom. It's an interesting quirk, but that's how it works. So in version 2 of the utility pack, the cargo bay doors have been significantly improved. Uh, initial feedback from version 1, which just had the doors open and closed, was that having to use docking ports within the bay was less than ideal. So now the first click opens the ports, which then allows you to see what's in the cargo bay, and the second click, or staging, because you can stage this item, allows you to basically drop whatever is on the floor. You'll also note right here, this is an actual docking port, so you can actually dock things back to the cargo bay, and then close the doors and repeat the process as many times as you want. So I want to do a little example, which is this rover, which we're going to land on the moon, or at least attempt to, because the first two times I tried this, weren't great. We're going to zoom out and find a big crater. There we go. There's a big crater coming up. And retrofire. Release. And we say goodbye to our little rover who's hopefully going to clear the bay before I have to re-engage the engines. Otherwise, this is going to be very, very messy. And then obviously, again, you can close the doors once he's cleared the bay. And continue on our mission, and hopefully not hit the ground, not hit the ground, hit, not hit the ground, not, oh, we're hitting the ground. Yeah, that happened. And yes, our little rover did make it to the surface of the moon, and he's able to drive along, which, at this point, I probably should mention, I do have a rover pack coming with upgraded wheels and some other cool features for your extraterrestrial surface exploration. So be sure to uh, check that out probably in another week or two. Before I introduce the next item on the pack, I just thought I should go over the menu system so people know where to find this stuff. In structural, you're gonna find the structural 45 pieces. And in fairings, this is where you're going to find the cargo bays, and the pedal tube uh, fairings. And then in the various sizing, you're gonna be able to find the engine breakaway system, the hidden separator, which is the one that you can change to make it look like the side of your spacecraft, sort of a SpaceX Falcon 9 kind of style. And then you can also find the truss separator, which is sort of that N1 style. In aerodynamics, you will find the mega chute deorbiter, more on that a little bit later. Finally, anything that doesn't really fit with scaling size or have another group, uh, you'll be able to find in a tab called Utility, which is things like the PicoSat, the landing gear, a solar radiator, and this next item, the vent port for 10 second bursts. So let's give that a check out. The vent port is sort of an interesting byproduct of testing for other stuff that you eventually realize, huh, this could maybe be useful or absolutely silly. And that is that these little guys here will vent your liquid fuel for 10 seconds. There's no thrust, the ISP of this is zero, but they'll go for 10 seconds and they'll basically jet fuel into space. I can think of one or two reasons why you might want to do this, especially as more multi-fuels come out, but basically it allows you to reduce the weight of your spacecraft by basically venting fuel you apparently don't need. In version two, some of the separators have been improved. So in one example, we do have the hidden separator, which you can change to basically look like any part of your rocket, which is really cool. And we also have this truss separator. Now this is the big improvement. The original truss separator I had, people complained about a lot. So now I have this sleeker version, which we can detach right there. Very basic, but it looks cool. So this brings us to the final two objects of the pack, mega chute and the vertical landing gear. So here we are in the upper atmosphere. Normally parachutes are not able to be used, but the mega chutes, you can pretty much use them anywhere. As you can see here, they deploy and they really do slow down a spacecraft. Now, one little thing about the mega chute I should mention is that prepare for a very long descent because this will take a while. 
So that's all the items in the utility pack. If you have any suggestions or requests, please let me know in the comments below or on my Discord channel where I do take user feedback very serious in terms of what I am designing next. As I mentioned before, there is a rover pack coming soon and I am also upgrading some engines and the exotic pack in the near future. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later.